Welcome back hunters. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to go burr with dual blades. Welcome back to another weapons tutorial hunters. This one is on dual blades. Now, I've been having a ton of fun with them on PC. The responsiveness of PC has just made this weapon so much more enjoyable for me. And having a mouse is also pretty clutch. If you're on mouse and keyboard, here are the keybinds that I've changed using my default for melee weapons, so feel free to use them as a guide. In this video, we'll discuss the basic attacks of dual blades, wire bugs, switch skills, good combos and skill combinations, some tips and tricks, and a few stamina skill suggestions. Before we begin though, I just want to mention that dual blades is primarily an element weapon. You have to build a variety of dual blades, one for each element, since they have so many attacks they're perfect to proc element burst damage. Status weapons are also good, they're not as ideal in Rise, but if you're not looking for 100% efficiency, I suggest them because I have a ton of fun. There's nothing like poisoning or paralyzing a monster before just attacking it. So with that, let's grab a wire bug and head on out. So starting here with some basic attacks, dual blades just have regular light attacks and heavy attacks. So light combo is just a 3 hit, a double slash, double slash, return stroke, and a circle slash. Your heavy attacks start with right click and you perform this by a lunging strike followed by a left round slash, a two step attack. Now both of these are neat but you'll rarely ever use them because dual blades actually has three different modes. The dual blade symbol at the top left of your screen is your indicator as to which form you are in. If there is no color on the blade or around it, you are in normal mode. If the blades are glowing, you are in demon mode. And if the blades are red but not glowing, you are in arch demon mode. So let's start with demon mode. Clicking Ctrl or ZR will activate the demon mode and it does a quick animation of putting both blades in the air as a red glow appears around you. You can kind of imagine it like a mode that absorbs energy from the monster. As you deal damage, your meter fills up with white and once it reaches red, it's filled up. It doesn't take too long to be honest, just a couple of hits and you're usually filled up. Now there are a few changes to your attacks and abilities while in demon mode. First off, as you can see, your mobility is greatly enhanced. You run a lot faster and you do the classic Naruto run. You actually look and feel like Naruto himself. Additionally, all the attacks that have changed actually do better damage. However, nothing is free in this world. Take a look at your stamina bar. Whenever you are in demon mode, stamina will continuously drain, even if you're standing still. This is the first key part of dual blades. Stamina management is crucial and you have to maximize your efficiency with your actions while in demon mode. When you exit out of demon mode, your stamina will immediately start to regen, so throughout a hunt, the concept of dual blades is entering and exiting demon mode at a control pace to maximize damage. So let's go through the demon mode changes on your attacks. In any hunt, your first step will always be to go demon mode to fill up your meter. In terms of attacks, the light attack becomes demon fangs, twofold and then sixfold demon slash. The sixfold demon slash does have a bit of an animation lock, you're gonna have to go through all six attacks before you can roll out. The heavy combo actually gains an extra attack, and so you start with something known as the Demon Flurry Rush, which is a forward moving and damaging attack, followed by a left round slash and then a left double round slash. Now in reality, dual blades are actually an ideal weapon with a combination of light and heavy attacks. The light combo in, in itself is used for small openings, does not have much of an animation lock and you can dodge out of most attacks immediately. Demon Flurry is a great movement skill which also damages. If you're trying to reposition or close the gap between you and the monster, starting with Demon Flurry is the way to go. But we'll elaborate on these combos in just a little bit in the combo section which can be seen in the timestamps below. The next skill is the Blade Dance which is the ultimate ground move of Demon Mode. It's a single move and has a huge animation lock. It's a 16 hit combo that you cannot break and thus it's only good for big openings when a monster is knocked or trapped or paralyzed. Now that is for the general hunters. If you are an expert and you know the monsters really well that you can carve out a 5 second window for yourself by dodging an attack, then you can fit Blade Dance right in. Now while Blade Dance is the ultimate ground move, let's talk about some of the aerial moves. And as a reminder, we're still in demon mode for any good aerial attacks. 
While you're in the air, you have two options. Clicking left click will initiate the mid-air round slash. You can only perform this once and it's going to return you to the ground as soon as it's ended. The second move is the staple move of aerial dual blades, the heavenly blade dance or Beyblade move as people like to call it. Clicking right click in the air while you're in demon mode will initiate this ultimate aerial move. This move is a really wild which basically carries you from the point of contact on the monster to the other end of the monster, basically in the direction that you're pointing the mouse. For large monsters, it usually scales all the way along the back to the head or the tail depending on your direction, and then it'll launch you off and back to the ground. It's a super cool move and there's some neat combos that you can get off with this. It's great for damage and most of the time, it'll position opposite of the monster if you execute it properly. Now you might be asking me, how does this blade class get into the air? Do I have a vault? The answer is yes and no. By default, dual blades do not have any sort of vaulting capabilities, but Rise has a built-in wire bug which increases aerial mobility. If you have the default dual blade setup, you can use a wire bug while your weapon is sheathed by holding middle mouse button and aiming above the monster and clicking control. Once you're above the monster, you click control again to enter demon mode and then you initiate whichever attack you wish. The second way to do this, and this is one that I do every time a monster goes to a new area, is that you can ride your palamute close to the monster, do a palamute jump, then jump off your palamute launching you further into the air. Once again here, demon mode and then use whichever aerial skill you wish. So you can see the Mizu as an example, they moved to a new area, I caught up to them and I just went right across the entire body with the heavenly blade dance. A great opener, I gotta say. Now besides these methods, there are two skills introduced in Rise for Swiss skills for the dual blades that'll get you into the air, and we'll discuss those in a little bit. So that's it for the moves that you need to know about demon mode. Arch demon mode is an interesting concept. You can kind of think of it like your final form, you were in normal and then you gain demon powers where you suck the life out of those you attack, and then when you release demon mode, you channel your powers into your blade. And you can see this because now your blades are glowing, but not your character anymore. Certain attacks are changed again with Arch Demon Mode and those certain attacks are the ones that will actually use up your red meter and deal more damage. Ideally, once you learn Dual Blades though, basically after watching this video and practicing a bit, you should never be returning to normal white blades in a hunt. You'll continuously alternate between Demon Mode to gain power in your blades and Arch Demon Mode to deal more damage while gaining stamina. So let's talk about the changes that came with the Arch Demon Mode. Your light combo actually stays the same, but also the damage doesn't change, so it's not really worth to use in Arch Demon Mode. The heavy combo actually changes though, and becomes the first two part of your Demon Mode heavy combo. This includes the great movement skill of Demon Flurry Rush, and then a left or right round slash. This is actually extremely important, because while you're in Arch Demon Mode, you're regaining stamina, that's your purpose, so you want to be able to use an attack that moves you quite a bit and still gets some damage, and the Demon Flurry is perfect for that. So as you can see, Arch Demon Mode uses the red gauge power you gained to use the better skills outside of Demon Mode. The next step is that you also have access to the attack known as Demon Flurry. Now this is a move that is very similar to the Blade Dance with one big change. Instead of one full 16 hit combo, it's now broken into three parts. As you can probably guess, yes, that means you can dodge in between if you need to while still outputting high damage like the Blade Dance. This full combo actually deals more damage than the Blade Dance in Demon Mode, so if you have the opportunity, go for it. Now keep in mind, Demon Flurry is only available in Arch Demon Mode, so it's going to use up that red gauge and you're going to have to transform back to Demon Mode to gain power very soon. Now of course, you can't dodge and then continue the combo. If you break the 3 step combo, you have to start over. But also keep in mind that you're only really using these Demon Flurries in Arch Demon to regain stamina, so even if you can't get the whole combo off, don't sweat it while in Arch Demon Mode. A final skill that you also get access to is the mid-air spinning Beyblade move, although it's slightly different yet again. It's not as automatic as in Demon Mode. Demon Mode has a nice lock feature that sets you in motion across the monster's body, but in Arch Demon Mode, you need to put a little bit more effort into the attack. It also splits the attack just like the Demon Flurry, so you have to remember to perform the mid-air blade dance finisher before you get to the end of the monster. The finisher is just basically clicking right click or A once again before you reach the end of the monster. So it's an extra couple of steps that you have to think about and worry about. It's not entirely worth the time or effort in my opinion, but it does deal some good damage and if you're playing full aerial dual blade style, then it might be worth it. 
So, those are the basic moves. Let's talk about some wire bugs. The first and permanent wire bug skill is the Shrouded Vault. Now, this is actually a counter for dual blades. It's a quick animation of you sending out your wire bug like two meters in front of you and then pulling you forward. If you are hit any time between sending your wire bug out and fully catching up to it, you will avoid damage and actually do a spin in the air returning damage to the monster. Now in my opinion here, I feel like Dual Blade should have some sort of cool smoke effect just to add to the whole shroud thing, but I digress. It's very similar to a bow's dodge bolt but with a bigger window. And you can also counter roars with it which I think is probably one of the best tactical uses of this skill. Specifically speaking, if you can dodge the roar, especially at the start of a hunt, you have a big window to just start building up your meter and get to your archdemon mode much quicker. Aside from that, I'd only use this if you're actually caught in the wrong position. You can easily pull the Shroud of Vault to dodge and damage the monster in return. The first of the changeable wire bugs is now the Piercing Bind, which is a really cool attack. If you hit a monster, you will stick a dagger of sorts into that part and basically gain extra damage on that body part for every attack that you hit within the next 5 seconds. Now in addition to the extra damage, after the 5 seconds the dagger will explode and this explosion damage is actually huge. The explosion damage is also raised based on the number of attacks that you fit in in those 5 seconds. You can very close get to 100% extra damage if you get enough attacks in. Usually a single demon flurry rush and a blade dance is enough to get 100% and I'll showcase this in the combo section. Now piercing bind can be changed out for the tower vault wire bug skill. Now this is a wire bug mobility move that you can use with your weapons unsheathed. Tower vault basically pulls you up in a vertical motion from any point in space. It has a slight horizontal movement so just be prepared to move a couple inches forward. So not a damage skill but it does set you up very nicely to do a lot of aerial combos. And because of this it makes it actually very difficult to choose between this and the piercing bind. Tower Vault does have the extra advantage that it can be used in the air. So if you're already in the air and dealing damage and notice that you're about to land when the monster is going to attack. You can use Tower Vault to dodge up into the air and avoid the attack. And you can also follow it up with another aerial attack. So the Tower Vault really increases the viability of the aerial playstyle attacks, it keeps you in the air longer and it'll enable you to basically finish any aerial combo with the Heavenly Blade Dance. If you choose to keep the Piercing Bind though, there are multiple ways to get into the air like I talked about with the Wire Bug and the Palamute, but there's also another switch skill that can get you into the air without using any Wire Bugs at all. Demon Flight is the aerial switch skill which replaces Demon Flurry Rush. Now in my opinion, this is a drastic change to the style of dual blades. For those of you from World, it may feel a bit odd to you since it's just so common and comfortable to have a Demon Flurry Rush for movement. Demon Flight, as the name suggests, is a skill that'll get you into the air while you are in Demon Mode or Arch Demon Mode. Pressing right click will initiate a leaping attack, which if it connects with the monster you will get launched into the air, dealing damage as you go up. Once you're in the air, you have the same options as you have for any aerial attacks in demon mode. Now the one thing to note that's really amazing here, this skill does have decent iframes. If you attack a monster as you're getting hit, you will not get hit and instead you will land your hit and jump into the air. So as long as they don't have a follow up or secondary attack, you will be safe to get some serious aerial combo damage while they're resetting. So the main focus of this skill is to get you into the air and it puts a focus on aerial dual blade playstyle. This is important to remember because it's not useful for all monsters. Smaller more agile monsters you might not have as many opportunities with them moving around before you can actually get an aerial attack off. Aerial dual blades is definitely more suited for longer and larger monsters or monsters that just don't move around too too much so you can focus your aerial attacks. The last thing to keep in mind with this switch skill is that you're losing the demon flurry rush mobility so moving forward and catching up to a monster is going to take you longer as well as repositioning it's going to be a little bit more difficult to reposition and get damage. Now the final switch skill is a change in demon mode itself. Feral demon mode comes with a few interesting changes which really again change the playstyle of dual bits. Before anything else just to note here Feral Demon Mode does apply a basic 1.2 raw multiplier to your base damage. I don't believe it modifies the element damage but if it does let me know in the comments guys I'm still testing this. So to start one of the first changes you'll notice is that it has a longer animation on the ground to activate. Regular Demon Mode just lifts his arms up in the air crosses his blades and you're good. This one does a whole spinning action thing and then does some Super Saiyan Goku Mode stance. It's really cool. It's sick. 
but it's a longer animation that will slow you down in terms of getting to your main combos. The trade-off is that if you're really close to the monster, that animation actually deals damage which can add up over time. So it's the opposite of regular demon mode which does damage when you exit, this one does damage when you enter demon mode. The second and probably rougher change for most though is the speed. In regular demon mode, you run and feel like Naruto. In feral, you actually just run like Naruto, but your speed is gone. You're back to the more regular running speed as if your weapons were sheep. In feral demon mode, your dodges are also changed with two added bonuses. The first is that you actually use less stamina per dodge, so you can actually fit in a couple more dodges if you like. The second is that you actually do damage as you dodge around, so as long as you're close to the monster, you're going to be able to hit them and do more damage. Now this is huge for a weapon that has such crucial stamina management. You'll be able to remain in feral demon mode for a much longer period of time and get more damage as long as you're not wasting stamina on unnecessary dodges. So overall this mode is really OP. The only thing you are losing is the speed of running which for beginners this can be very helpful for you to learn to reposition with dual blades. So I would recommend once you have learned positioning and stamina management with regular demon mode switch to feral. No seriously, no cap on this, if you can master stamina management with regular demon mode, you will be a god in feral demon mode. The last thing I want to mention, the aerial animation into demon mode actually doesn't change. So the combo we mentioned before about wire bugging over the monster or palamute jumping over the monster, entering demon mode and then doing an aerial attack is still very viable. Now, in terms of combos, it's going to differ quite a bit depending on your setup. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to recommend some combination of Swiss skills and then talk about the combos. The great thing about Rise that I enjoy is that it's giving players more flexibility on the style you want to play, something we lost in World. Now the first combination is a regular Demon Flurry Rush, Feral Demon Mode, and Piercing Bind. Your basic combo when you enter demon mode is just a demon flurry rush to catch up to the monster, rising slash, demon fangs, twofold, and then sixfold demon slash, which is basically just a light combo. This is good for just normal openings between monster attacks, rush in with the demon flurry rush, get some damage, and then dodge out, reposition, and then re-enter with demon flurry. If you need to recover stamina, exit out and use demon flurry 1 and 2 in arch demon mode. Now an extension of this combo is that I usually skip the 6 fold for the first time and instead I'll use the right or left round slashes to keep a smooth combo on the target. To do this you initiate the normal combo with rising slash, demon fangs and 2 fold. When you get to 2 fold though, hold D or A or your whatever direction you want to go and click left click or light attack. This will shift you in said direction while dealing damage. Then you repeat this again and if you decide that you want to end off the combination use the 6 fold attack and reposition. Or if you want to go back, you can use the opposite direction and then do another round slash. You continue back and forth alternating left and right until you're done with this combo. The round slashes are actually very useful during a battle. In case the monster shifts or moves around a little bit more than you expected, you can use them to kind of reposition yourself while still damaging. Now if you have a big opening like a knockdown, a paralysis, or a trap on the monster, there are two combos that you can do with piercing bind. I will make a note here that the piercing bind actually makes you take a step back. So because of this, you will need to close that gap. If you are in demon mode, perform a piercing bind on the head, immediately do a demon flurry rush to move back, and then do a blade dance to finish. The binder will explode before you end the blade dance combo, but that's okay because you already get a ton of hits in. The second combo is if you're not in demon mode and you have feral demon mode equipped. Feral Demon Mode actually moves you a step forward. So if you perform the Piercing Bind, then activate Feral Demon Mode, you will actually be back in position and you can immediately go into a Blade Dance to deal damage. This combo itself makes Feral and Piercing Bind such a good combination of skills to play with. I have a ton of fun with them, it's smooth, it's clean, and just seeing all the damage numbers appear from the Binding, your activation, and then the Blade Dance is just satisfying. Now with this mode, it's harder to get into the air, but that's not the focus of this setup. Aerial attacks are still cool though, so you can still use the wire bug technique or the palamute jump that I previously mentioned in the aerial attack section. Now let's talk about an aerial setup. Demon flight, feral demon mode, and tower vault. Now this is a fully focused aerial style setup. Feral demon mode is my suggestion here because again, less stamina and more damage from the demon attacks. 
There is no real combo with the Tower Vault. You really only have two attacks while you're in the air, which we've already mentioned. My one suggestion with this combination is that just use Demon Flight to get into the air. Don't waste a wire bug using Tower Vault. Use Demon Flight, damage with mid-air round slash, and then use the Tower Vault if you have space to stay in the air and then choose to do a mid-air round slash or a spinning blade dance. Now which one you do depends on the monster. If it's a smaller monster with a smaller hitbox, you might want to just do another mid-air round slash before you come back to the ground. If it's a big long monster, definitely go for that heavenly blade dance while you're in the air. Click that right click and fly along the back of the monster. Now the final two combinations I recommend for skills is Demon Flight and Piercing Bind with either Demon or Feral Demon Mode. With Demon Flight, I recommend Demon Mode only because of the speed you have. Since you don't have Demon Flurry for mobility, being able to run really fast is actually very helpful. Particularly for this combination since Piercing Bind is a ground attack which requires precise positioning. If you're able to catch up to the monster with your weapon sheath with Arch Demon Mode active, Left click will actually perform a demon flight, pulling your weapon out and leap you onto the monster and into the air and you can follow with any aerial attack you wish. For demon mode and basic attacks, you can do the normal light combo or you can do multiple demon flights into mid air round slashes. Because demon flight has iframes, you can dodge most attacks while still getting some damage and powering up your blades. If you have Feral Demon Mode activated, you can also do the previous combo we mentioned with the Piercing Bind, Feral Demon Mode, and then Blade Dance. Still does hella damage, perfect for this mode as well. The new combo that comes with this combination is that if you have your weapons out, what you want to do is do a Piercing Bind, and then go into Demon Mode and center yourself on the monster, perform a Demon Flight, and then immediately do a Heavenly Blade Dance. Generally, you want to aim away from the monster, but you can pick your direction. More than likely, what's going to end up happening is you're going to finish the attack behind the monster. They're going to try to just reset, and you can do a 180 flick with your mouse or the lock on button on controller, and then jump right back in and do another demon flight across the body back to the other side. So let's look at Anche as an example here. So you have to look for a big opening. That's the key to this combo. I see that he completely misses his mirror, and I use my piercing bite on his leg. Now at this point he just missed me with his leg attack so I know I have time to go into my demon mode and then straight into demon flight. Now I already know that this is going to be a good combo because he got stunned here. I go straight into my heavenly blade dance. But once you're in this you can still move your mouse around. You can notice that I'm already pointing back at him. I'm ready for the next combo. I don't give him any space and I go straight into my demon flight. Demon flight has iframes and it's going to ignore whatever attack is coming at you. In this case it was a roar and I go straight into my heavenly blade dance. Now take a look at my stamina here. We have just a little bit left. We have enough for one dodge. And after that heavenly blade attack, you know he's going to turn and attack you. So you, I dodge to the left, dodge whatever attack is coming at me, and then we're in the clear. We release demon mode, start recharging stamina, and go back into the fight. So just another look here, really quickly in full speed. It's really quick. You got to be on your toes, moving your mouse already as you're going through that heavenly blade dance. Get back in and do the second one really quickly and then be prepared to dodge. It's a really quick combo, you gotta be on your toes. I learned this from Sam and I'll link his video in the description below, but he did it on controller. I couldn't really get it because you have to click left bumper to re-auto focus and the camera focusing for me was always a struggle, but with mouse and keyboard, obviously I can control my camera with my mouse and it feels so much more natural to me. This combo takes a hell of a toll on your stamina, but if you perform it correctly from a full stamina bar, you will have a little bit left over. While you recharge, it's a good time to just prepare for the next piercing bind yet again and then repeat. Now this combo changes a little bit if you're using Feral Demon Mode. Because stamina use is less in Feral Mode, you can actually activate that first and then perform the piercing bind. So here's an example with Raytheon, I'm already in Feral Demon Mode. I do the piercing bind. Now I accidentally clicked the wrong button here so I didn't, I had to reset. Then I went into Demon Flight, up in the air, into Heavenly Blade Dance. And we get to the back of the monster. Now he's going to turn around and attack me. So what we have to do, again, Demon Flight has iframes. We dodge that attack, we're in the air. Heavenly Blade Dance across the body and we're out of stamina. Now I made that little mistake beforehand and I lost some stamina, but we still have enough time to walk to the side and dodge his next attack. Now in my opinion, Feral Demon Mode is actually more efficient for this combo. And the main reason is because you're already in Demon Mode. So when you do the Piercing Bind, you go immediately into attacks and you get some damage which then outputs more damage from the Piercing Bind. 
Now dual blades requires a lot of stamina control and management as much as possible so there are a few things that you can do outside of your hunt to have good stamina management in the hunt. Now this includes eating the right dongo meals and having the appropriate skills on your build. For the dongos I recommend eating for booster for extra damage, fighter to reduce stamina use and glutton to reduce stamina consumption. Now the final two do stack and they actually reduce stamina use for different actions so be sure to have both of them. Now in terms of other items, dash juice is actually a really good one to have whenever you go into a hunt. A single dash juice lasts about 3 minutes during every hunt and for dual blades the primary use of it is to reduce the stamina used for dashing. Now for skills, I'll mention some general ones here but I haven't reached endgame yet for dual blades so I'll post a follow up video so be sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications. Stamina reducing skills are 100% worth since they increase your demon mode damage uptime. Constitution is a favored one which again reduces stamina costs even more for basic actions. Usually about levels 2 to 3 are enough for dual blades. Stamina Surge does the opposite where it actually boosts your stamina recovery rate. So this is going to be primarily noticeable when you're outside of demon mode. Usually one is enough, two would be very comfortable. Finally, if you are using Palicos, they have support songs, specifically the Go Fight Win, which reduces your stamina loss even more. Dual Blades though for sure is an element weapon, so for any build, you want to maximize element damage from the jewels. Early game, this is okay to use armor, but late game, don't use armor for element skill, just use the level 1 jewel slots. Critical element is also okay to have, it's a bit nerfed in Rise compared to other games, so I'll take a look more into this for the next video. After that, the regular Blade Master skills, Critical Eye and Attack Jewels are great, but again, Crit Element is the most important. And that's about it for the Dual Blades, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to subscribe to keep it locked for more Monster Hunter tutorials. Dual Blades are a wonderful weapon in Rise. I'm actually having a ton of fun with them, especially on PC. Anyway guys, let me know if you have any comments or questions in the comments below. I'll be happy to make a follow-up video or pin some missed information in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to give this a like. As usual guys, stay safe, be happy, and keep hunting. Sky Sensei is out.